Hey friends, welcome back to another video. Today I am going to be painting something a little selfishly. I'm going to be painting a portrait of a beautiful Siamese cat with those beautiful blue eyes that they're known for. I say selfishly because I love painting cats and I love having that really fun pop of color. So yeah, this is a really fun one for me. So like usual, I'm painting with oils here. I'm like, I started on a primed masonite board that I cut and primed myself and sanded. And I also went ahead and did a dilute wash of acrylic paint on top. I don't like painting on a white surface. If you've watched any of my other videos, this is probably not a surprise to you. I find it a lot more difficult and just frankly, it's kind of obnoxious. Um, but I find by having a surface that is not beer white, in fact, kind of like a soft muted brown, it feels better to paint on, but it also allows you to build up your shadows and highlights at the same time. And because you've got that sort of middle ground, I find it just, it's more natural looking and it's a lot more fun to paint on. And sometimes I like to leave little peaks of that sort of brown wash in the background and it just adds a fun texture and a little bit of a sort of like undone vibe to it, um, which I'm personally a big fan of. I love pairing that sort of raw, unfinished vibe with gorgeous brush strokes and a little bit of grunge paired with realistic animals. One of my favorite looks. So yeah, I have that back sort of painted with brown acrylic paint because it dries super easily. And now I'm going ahead with my oils and having fun bringing this cat to life. It's a lot of fun being able to paint pets. I'm a huge animal lover myself and I love pets. I've always had pets. I have an adorable Corgi right now. His name is Newbie. He is absolutely ridiculous. Um, and I, I am very excited for the day that I'm able to also get a cat because they are also my favorite. I love cats. They are ridiculous and so goofy and they are just always a pleasure to have in your life. So in the meantime, I will just paint one and have fun that way. But with this painting here, I absolutely loved having that pop of blue on a relatively muted sort of painting here. Um, it's just such a beautiful pop of color and especially paired with that sort of creamy fur. Um, I ended up putting a little bit of warmth into that fur in my glaze layer, which you'll see towards the end of this video. Um, and it's just a lot of fun having that warm contrast against that blue just ties everything together beautifully. And I just love the way it looks because it makes that blue pop more without making it look unnatural and it just kind of sets it apart. Mm, I love that look. So while I was bringing this painting to life, I found myself really falling in love with pairing rough brush strokes with soft fur. So using kind of those rougher, bigger brush strokes, like using a big brush, but also making sure that you're kind of putting a lot of oomph behind it and pairing that with soft fur it just made for such a fun contrast. And especially by using those big brush strokes, it actually does wonders for sort of building up that fur texture without making it super detailed, you know, letting the paint and the brush strokes speak for themselves while still making sure it obviously looks like fur. So I found myself playing with this a lot here and I had so much fun and I love the way it looks. Playing around with brush strokes is one of my favorite things to do, especially if you're pairing it with realistic animals. Um, it just makes for such a gorgeous contrast and adds a lot of drama and fun to the painting. Not only that, it's fun to do. I love going in with a big brush and it feels kind of like making a mess, but a beautiful mess in a way. So that's why one of my favorite things to do when I'm painting is work with really large brushes. And if you've ever done any of my painting tutorials or you've been inside the Wildlife Painting Academy before, 
you will know that I'm always telling you to use the largest brush possible for a given area. And that's kind of why. There's multiple reasons. One of them is that you can actually progress more quickly through a painting. Um, it also allows you to kind of build a more solid foundation for your painting without jumping into details prematurely. And also it allows you to get some really gorgeous organic texture in there and add some of that drama and fun to your painting. So I always recommend grabbing a really large brush. In fact, sometimes I give myself challenges where I'm working only with a brush that is like way too big for the painting and see what I can do with it. Like I've even bought big cheap like painters brushes for painting walls and see what I can do with a smaller canvas and just have fun playing with that. And another great little thing that typically happens when you use a really large brush is you are inevitably gonna get some wild textures. And it's always a fun challenge to see how you can actually like implement that crazy texture that you get from that brush into your painting seeing how you can make it work, you know, maybe you're not trying to blend it in at all, but maybe you're making it a feature in your painting. And not only is it fun, but it tends to result in a really cool, unique sort of finished artwork. Um, one that I absolutely love. I love brush strokes. So yeah, that's why I tend to allow my brush strokes to speak, it gives my painting more expression, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> So now we're reaching one of my favorite parts of any painting, glazing. Uh, I just, I love this stuff so much. Again, if you've been in any of my tutorials or the Wildlife Painting Academy, you know I cannot shut up about how much I love glazing. So here basically I'm just mixing up a light shadow glaze and I'm using that to kind of carve out the fur a little bit, add a little bit more drama in those shadows. I added a little bit of warmth here. So I mostly was using a blend of like ivory black and burnt umber. And it just gives a nice sort of color to that shadow just to give things a little more drama and life. And then using that to carve out some fur before going in and brightening those beautiful blue eyes. Using a glaze is so much fun and so versatile. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend doing so. I'm working with oils here, but I was still using glazing techniques when I was working exclusively with acrylics. So I love when artists start playing around with this because there's so much you can do with it. It doesn't even have to be adding saturation. It can be reducing saturation. It can be adding so much fun to your painting. Oh my God, I could go on for days about how much I love glazing, but yeah. Usually the final step of my painting is just adding a few last minute details on top. Here I'm just adding a couple little wispy fur bits that are kind of trailing off the edge of our cat to show off all that beautiful fluff. And a couple final highlights. Again, wispies in those ears, can't forget those. You know, little sparkles in the eyes that really bring things together. And the step that I almost always forget, hmm, whiskers. <laughs> Don't forget the whiskers like I almost always do. So yeah, that kind of brings us to the end of this portrait here. This cat is gonna be entering the Wildlife Painting Academy very soon. And if you've never heard of it before, it is my super affordable monthly membership where you get access to a big library of full-length painting tutorials where in a nutshell, I teach you how to paint realistic wildlife and pets super easily. All of my classes are broken down in such a way that are super achievable and absorbable and it really truly does make painting realistic wildlife easy. So if this sounds great to you, check it out in the description of this video. Alright friends, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.